mentioned entrepreneurs for a second yeah. because I feel like uh, a lot of entrepreneurs, they feel comfortable working, right? Yeah. They, they, like, the 15 hours is actually something that takes them away from the things, say their health yeah. that are actually discomfortable or not comfortable or their relationships that are faltering yeah. or, you know, their parental responsibilities somewhat. Yeah. So, so what are some things that, uh, and, and do you coach entrepreneurs by any chance as, as well? Not like, so much uh, one-on-one anymore, but a little bit. Okay. And, and what if, what are the things that you've noticed, uh, you know, when you were kind of like working with entrepreneurs, uh, that they would actually use, uh, kind of like that they would be comfortable with that you would actually have to like push them towards. Uh, it, usually it's exactly that it's, uh, stepping away from working all the hours in the day that they're working or working in different ways. Now, I, I think work's very important. I'm not saying like, don't work really hard. I, I think that's critical. But if you're working in exactly the same way for years, months, or years on end, something needs to change there to take you up to the next level. And I'll, I'll give you the perfect example. I, I was working with this entrepreneur, tech entrepreneur out of the Los Angeles area was already fairly successful. And he was growing his business mostly through marketing. So he was putting money into ads, email marketing, all the digital marketing that is so popular now. And he was growing at a, a decent clip, not great, but pretty reliable. He could say, okay, we're gonna grow five to 10% every month going forward. Now, one trajectory is, yeah, just continue to do that for however many years and that percentage increase will grow pretty quickly. You'll be successful over some period of time. But the other pathway that we started looking at is, well, how else can you grow? Like we've proven out these models. We know that they can work, but what about picking up the phone and calling potential clients? Yeah, as I said, he, he was already moderately successful. He had a, a really nice network. I'm like, why don't you just pick up the phone and call some of these people? And he stopped and he's like, well, I, I don't want to. I, I can't call these friends. I can't ask my, uh, my neighbor to be in my company. Like he was so comfortable with emailing anybody in the world, but when it came down to having a conversation, no way. So we, we worked through some of that discomfort. He used some of his team members to hold him accountable where he was going to invite one person a day into his company. And he did. And, you know, the first month he did that, he grew by something like 25%. Like it was insane. So like working the way you're working, great, fantastic. It's pr producing results. But when you start to work through things that are probably uncomfortable to you, you're going to produce entirely different results. And they're probably dramatically better from where you already are. Beautiful. And, and what are some ways that we can be proactive about, you know, finding these levels of discomfort, both, let's just say business-wise, professionally, but also like personally? Uh, well, well, it's a good question, a really good question, because, you know, as I said, we we our results are determined by the discomfort that we avoid. And we make those decisions about what's comfortable and what's uncomfortable and what I'm never going to do again, usually from a very young age. So by the time we get to the point where we're listening to, uh, Dan, your podcast or working out in the world, like we, we become adults, we forget those things that we've decided on. And we're almost blind to them. We've constructed our business and our lives to avoid discomfort unknowingly. So it's almost a blind spot. Um, one of the things we've done, uh, and hopefully this is okay to share, but we put together a hunting discomfort quiz. It doesn't cost anything. It's not like I'm selling anything here, but it's 15 questions where you go through and you answer these things. It'll take you maybe five minutes. And what it's going to do is start to shed some light on what that discomfort might be for you. Now, can some people you share some of the questions on that one. Sure. On like what you would ask. Sure. Yeah. One of my favorites is, um, do you uh, look at commitments as something that holds you back versus a pathway to freedom? And uh, you know, just to unpack the answers there a little bit, you could say yes, you could say no. Some of the most successful people that I've ever met, like they, they personally made nine figures in their bank account. They have more commitments than I've ever seen in my life. I mean, one person in particular I'm thinking of, she has three personal assistants, three of them. And she's got 
uh, events, fundraisers, appearances, places she's donating money, coaching she's doing. Like she's got, if you look at her calendar, she is full from about 8 a.m. until 10 p.m. All full of commitments. Commitments are a pathway to results, to freedom, to achieving the things that we want to do, especially if they're commitments through discomfort. But a lot of folks will look at them and, and feel like it's an albatross holding them back. Like, oh, I don't want to lose my freedom and commit to that. Um, or I don't know where I'm going to be in six months, so I'm, I'm not going to sign up for that race. I might move, so I can't, uh, I can't sign up for my training right now, right? Like they, there's reasons, there's excuses, but those commitments are going to be huge and hunting them or hunting the discomfort of them is, is going to give you dramatic results. Yeah. I feel like we're living in a, a little bit of a commitment phobic society right no now. Question. Um, even from like a relationship standpoint, it's like that, you know, with Tinder coming out yeah. and uh, Bumble and whatnot, it's just like people can have <laughs> these non-committal relationships and get like the, the, I guess you could say the, the gold from it, which is like the sex, but yeah. not necessarily have to go through the committing to like one person. And, uh, and I do believe that's something that, uh, I do believe that's actually not a, that's definitely not a good thing. Um, it's, it's something that holds people back to a very large degree. And it also yeah. makes people like indecisive as well. Totally. Right. Uh, well, and I, and I, I would take a little bit of issue with that. Like sex, very nice, but I don't think that's really the, the gold inside of a relationship. I think if anything, sure, and to your sure. point, it, it can be an escape from discomfort, just like overworking can, yeah. um, or dating alone can be an escape from discomfort, right? I need to preoccupy myself with something because there's something in me that's uncomfortable with the situation I'm in, where I'm at, things I've done in my past. Um, I think the real gold in a relationship is the growth that comes from it. Uh, not like you're forcing somebody into growth, but somebody that can be with you as you change as a person over 5, 10, 20. You know, I look at my parents 40 plus years, like that's going to be the most meaningful thing to your life at the end of the day. It's not, oh, I slept with so-and-so on such a date and it was fantastic. Like you're going to forget that on your deathbed most likely. And that's actually, it leads to a lot of emptiness as well. No question. You know, it's like, I actually found that... Um, I had been through like a dating period and I actually, I had to get away from it because no matter what happens, you always end up going back to your bed, yeah. feeling a little empty because you didn't have that type of relationship with, uh, or you didn't have the, the fulfillment that comes with actually having a relationship right. things like growth, things like a shared vision. Right. So yeah, it's a, uh, it's definitely a slippery slope. And, uh, the, that's what actually people think is is like it's I would instead of calling it gold I would actually call it like pool's gold yeah there to you a go very large extent yeah it's like they think that's what what they're after but what they're really after is like intimacy yeah what they're really after is uh is a having some sort of like you know shared kind of like connection with each exactly. other exactly so yeah yeah, yeah. well so, I don't know if you've ever read any uh, Paul Tillage German American theologian um. No. He's got some really insightful stuff around what humans are concerned with. And he says, humans, overall, all of us throughout time have had two different kinds of things that we deal with. The first thing we all know very well are, are finite goals, finite things. I, I want to sleep with this person. I want to be worth this much money. I want to be married by such and such a date. I want to hit this uh, uh, BMI. Right, I, I want to squat this many pounds. Specific goals, specific times, and we need those things. But he says we lose sight of the second kind of things that humans are concerned with. And he says this, this is the infinite or the ultimate. Things like love, joy, peace, and gratitude. Things that no matter what happens in the world can never be taken away from you. And when we step back from our day to day, or, or maybe step forward and say, you know, on my deathbed, what do I want to say my life was about? What's most important to me? Is, is it love? Is it joy? Is it peace? Like which of those things are, are critical in my life? Then somewhat magically, we can achieve those finite goals much faster, much more efficiently. And to your point, much more fulfilled in the process. Yeah. And behind all those things, uh, going along with the theme of what we're talking about right mm -hmm. now is pushing yourself into really uncomfortable shit. Yeah. 
to get a level of peace, it could mean like uh, to get rid of some of the um, relationships that are in your life that are not necessarily serving you. Right. Um, to find love, it means to actually commit to to one person, to one thing, to to actually commit to something. Right. Uh, and these things are actually everyone thinks they're flippant, but they're really uncomfortable for a lot of people. Right.